Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this video, it's not a review. This is gonna be kind of a unique thing, kind of a special thing for me anyway, maybe for you if you guys have been watching the progress on this project this whole time. This is my first look at my own 100% personally developed action figure line, which I'm still working on obviously, but these are the first in-hand prototypes which I made myself. These are not like from a factory, so they are still made out of uh, molded and then cast resin. Uh, I'll get into that. I'll get into the specifics in a little bit, but I'm gonna give you a quick overview. Oh, I'm so glad that sword didn't hit that arm. It'll be a miracle if this doesn't fall over, by the way, <laughs> by the time I'm done doing this intro. Anyway, this is my own action figure line. Um, it's being developed under the name Rival Collectibles as the, as the brand, and then the line is Rival Clans. And this is what I was streaming all of those times I was streaming when it wasn't video games. And all the things I've been posting or the little cut-ins you've seen in my various videos lately or the things at the very end, that's what this is all about. Or all of that was about this. It's a whole line of action figures I'm developing. I've got it mostly, as you can see, mostly set now. I'm just kind of tinkering and working on things before we go to uh, the actual factories to get things produced. Uh, but it's it's essentially a 112 scale line of futuristic, cyberpunkish ninja slash samurai slash there's different characters, but Ninja and Samurai are gonna be the two focal points because those are always cool. They're two of my favorite designs in general. And then future, like retro future cyberpunky type stuff. I've always loved that. So uh, I guess if you could think about like uh, what the future would look like if you thought about it in the 90s mixed with ninjas. <laughs> I know it sounds corny as hell and I don't care. That's what I like. And hopefully there's enough people out there that like it too, but it seems like other people are, are digging these as I post the photos. So before we get into it a little bit more, uh, I will get them off the stand and show you the articulation and stuff, even though it's not finalized and all that kind of thing, but I will show it to you. But just to hit some points real quick as these are spinning around and before I have things in my hand and it becomes clumsy. Uh, price points are not set yet. Everybody keeps asking me about the price. I get that. Obviously that's an important thing. I don't know yet. I obviously haven't gone to the factory yet. I'm doing as much of it on my own as possible to keep costs down. If I just went to the factory and said make prototypes, obviously there would need to be a lot of adjustments in design and more and sculpts and things like that. And that eats up cost like crazy. So I'm doing as much of it as I can. I have my own 3D printer. I got it for this project. I print my parts out. I make molds of them. I make casts of them. I put them together. I see what needs to be changed. And I do the whole process over and over and over again. It's a very tedious, grueling, annoying process, but we're almost done with it, so that's why I figured it'd be time to show you guys this stuff. I do have to do a special shout out to uh, Specialty Resin and Chemicals. They make a resin for use with molds, not for 3D printing. The 3D printing is all form lab stuff, and that's just standard run in the mill. Things like everybody uses that stuff. Um, they make flexible stuff, but it doesn't work for this. Anyway, the resin I used is as close an approximation to PVC plastic as I've heard of. I've done, I've done a lot of research to look into this stuff, and their resin that they have, which is called Flexit 90, is absolutely wonderful for this sort of thing. It is very, very nice. It's exactly like PVC plastic. I mean, obviously you can get it in different hardnesses and things like that, the plastic, but as far as making a prototype, this is absolutely perfect. I could not have done it without them. Check it out, guys. It's Specialty Chemical and Resin. I will post a link in the description below. If you do any molding and casting, it's something you might want to look into. They have a whole line of products. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I also happen to use their silicone, but I mean, it's not like, I mean, it's silicone, the Tin Cure silicone. So it's not like there's anything crazy about it. I like it a whole bunch and use it, but it's not as unique as the Flexit 90 resin. It's fantastic. I also use some of their pigments. All that stuff's good too, but the Flexit 90 is wonderful. If you're into this sort of thing and you need to do molding and casting, that's something you can use. Okay, um, but that's why I have these, in fact. I have these to show you that I was able to make by myself because of that. That's why I went through that big long spiel about that stuff. I'm able to make functional prototypes at home and have them be almost the exact same thing as they would be from the factory if they were making test shots for me or something like that. All right, so I said I didn't, I don't know about the pricing yet. Uh, I'm aiming for 40 to $60. We'll see. I'm obviously the closer to 40, I can get it the better. And the higher it goes, the more accessories and things I'll have to pack in to increase the value. I understand that how pricing works, guys. We don't have to go into that. Again, I don't know what it's gonna cost yet. 
but that's the uh, that's the aim for it. And the whole idea behind these figures is form and function kind of melding together. They're gonna look awesome posed. And we're gonna have as much posability as possible while still looking awesome. And I know those are kind of general and vague terms, but I'm tired of seeing figures that either have crazy, goofy looking articulation in order to achieve poses, or figures that look really good and can't pose. I'm trying to find the best blend, or I tried to find, I've already done what I wanna do with it. <laughs> uh, the best blend of those two things. And we'll talk about that more as I show you the figures up close, but I got as absolute much range of motion, much posability, out of these things as possible while maintaining sculpts that are look, gonna look good almost no matter how you pose them. That's the idea behind it. That's what I tried to achieve. Okay, I think that's probably enough. I guess I could say this before we get into the meat and taters. Uh, if you wanna follow the production process of these guys, oh, I guess there's a couple more things I need to say. Uh, one is Rival Collectibles on Facebook and Instagram is where I'm doing all the updates. Uh, the line is called Rival Clans, but obviously, like I said, the, the parent company, so to speak, is Rival Collectibles. Uh, so follow those on Facebook and Instagram. That's the best way to do this. I'm not going to be posting updates on my regular YouTube page or YouTube channel because that's not what the channel is about until it's time. And when I say until it's time, I mean when it's time to do the Kickstarter. That's how this is going to happen. People keep asking about when are we going to be able to do pre-orders after the kickstarter or as the kickstarter i've done this all out of pocket so far and i can't do production out of pocket so it's going to go through kickstarter and i don't know when that's going to be as soon as the figures are ready to do it that's going to be the next big step as far as you guys are concerned for me once i'm happy with all of my molds or the sculpts and everything then i have to contact the factory figure out how much it's going to cost what kind of numbers we can do that kind of thing and then it's time for the kickstarter so there's still some fairly large steps we have to take to get this to come to fruition but i wanted to give you guys updates or this update since i started doing those kind of like uh, little shameless plugs in my other videos all right and then the last thing i'll point out before we actually get them off the stand is a lot of the parts here are not final parts like you'll see on his robot arm he just has a regular little elbow there's a different elbow for the robot arm but i didn't bother making a mold of it because i didn't need to to test it it's it's got the same guts of the regular elbow but it has a different sculpt on the outside so i didn't bother so for this like he has just two regular elbows one's pink and black ignore the colors as well this is all just the resin color um there's no painting on these guys at all so not all the parts are done some of them have um, bigger crotch gaps or thigh gaps some of them have shorter ones they have different diaper pieces like not the knees are slightly not the same like there's lots of little things that'll change but functionally speaking this is what you're going to be looking at for the figure line oh also pins in the shoulders there will be no pins in the shoulders things like that um that's probably good enough okay let's go ahead and get them off the stand and take a closer look all right, we're gonna start with this guy, which is clearly not a finished figure. And I'm gonna leave these two in the background just because I'm curious to see how long that one's gonna stand up before it falls over. Like I said, it is mostly like a finished product, but the fact that it's balancing with me shaking the table, I just wanna test it. Anyway, this is just a quick look so you can see some of the sculpt work on here. As you might have been able to guess, it's a slightly stylized, more, I guess, pumped up regular human anatomy. And that's one of the things I really wanted to focus on with this line is to get the sculpts to something that actually looked like humans. I know a lot of the action figure lines that we see these days don't have a lot of attention to detail when it comes to anatomy. And I've spent a lot of time sculpting these torsos to make them look exactly as I wanted. And then just to kind of like give them that, uh, I guess you could say like street fighter, like hyper developed muscles that kind of thing and they're not like crazy like you might find a person that's actually as well developed as this and has big muscle groups and things like that but i wanted it to have a very natural look while still maintaining that kind of superhero-esque like just regular superman or batman like jim lee style musculature like overdeveloped but still somewhere in the realm of realism so that's why i have this and this guy obviously is a He's got some cybernetic parts on his face, that kind of thing. You're going to see a lot of that kind of stuff. Obviously, I only have a handful of the parts here. I've got all kinds of different designs that I just haven't made prototypes for because there's no need. You don't need to test every sculpt. You need to test all the mechanical connections and things like that. And uh, maybe I'll fit some of those in this video through like overlays and stuff. But that's the idea, generally speaking. So very well-defined anatomy that looks recognizable but is probably more ideal then is probably attainable by most people. So that's like one of the human ones. And then we do of course have, as I start moving parts around, I'm gonna shake the table too much. 
knock that guy over. We do have cybernetic parts, obviously, and so we're gonna have, there's actually various combinations of bodies and arms and things, because a lot of parts are gonna be reused to some extent. That's just the nature of doing something like this, especially a one-man production team like this. I, I don't have the budget, and I don't think you guys wanna pay enough to have 100% unique sculpts for every figure. There's gonna be a lot of combinations. Oh, and like I said, we're still using the little elbows. He'll have different elbows. But we do have a lot of cybernetic parts, uh, whether it's a full body, which I do have parts for full bodies, or whether it's combinations like you saw in the guy in the turnaround with the robot arm. Uh, we're gonna maximize variety of figures while using as many parts over and over again as possible, with whether it's add-on pieces or paint or whatever. That's just the nature of it. I mean, Mattel did it best in the DCUC line. Obviously, Hasbro does it. Everybody does it. You have to do it. Um, I'm going to do it in a way that makes it the most value. Like, it's not going to feel like you're buying a bunch of the same figure. Will a lot of them have similar parts for, like, the legs maybe or something like that? Sure, because who cares about legs? No, I still have, like, four different sets of legs, and we're not even starting with that many figures, so... There's going to be a lot of reused parts, but only in a good way, and I'm not going to do it in a way that makes it feel like you're getting cheated ever. But that's one of the um, cybernetic body sculpts, and I happen to really like this one. That's why I put up, put it together. I don't have a lower body for him yet, but there it is. And this guy's head is, again, partly cybernetic. He's got a visor. There's actually a face underneath the visor. Not that you'll want to take it off, but it'll be painted and everything. If I can get it off. Uh, it'll be painted and everything under there so that you have the full sculpt. It's just not going to look like it's half-assed or anything like that. But he's going to have a transparent visor with his eyes shining through or showing through. And of course we have Crazy Mohawk because that's something that's always, always in futuristic movies and things like that. And Mohawks are cool, right? Okay, so there's just another example. And again, we're not going to have pins in the shoulders. The shoulders are going to be insert molded. Uh, I may be able to do insert molding for the arms, which is how I believe Hasbro's doing their uh, pinless tech. That does get a little bit more costly. And I designed these so that the pins don't stand out as much. And hopefully I can get away with doing some insert molding. I, I definitely won't be able to do both of these. It's just going to get too expensive. And when we're talking about low production numbers and keeping prices down, you guys would rather have pegs than pay more. Trust me, that's a thing. <laughs> so we're going to do as little pins as po or as few pins as possible, but things like pins in the elbows and knees, most likely going to be the case. That's just the way it goes. And I'm going to get into the functionality of the articulation in a minute, but we're going to just do some overviews first. This is probably going to end up being a longer video, but hopefully you guys are interested in that. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this guy a little bit. Uh, so this is, as you might have noticed, mostly the same body or same sculpt as the uh, other torso body that I showed you. But this one, even though it's unpainted, has fi fibrous cybernetic muscles woven throughout the chest a little bit, the traps across the back, a lot of the main muscle groups, and then through the shoulders and arms as well. And obviously that's gonna be like a, a big theme is the cybernetic enhancements of these characters. And so this will be painted. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. It probably won't necessarily be just like silver paint in there because I don't think they would necessarily be silver. They'd probably be more like carbon fiber or black or something like that, but we'll see. I mean, there's gonna be a variety of releases obviously. So we'll toy with different color schemes and stuff, but I placed those around so that when they are colored, they're very dynamic looking and it looks really cool when they're posed. Oh, and while I'm here, I've had this question of, I don't know why I get this question so much, but I was asked if they're gonna have nipples. They do have nipples. They're very subtle nipples. I don't think I'm gonna paint them. I mean, I'm not producing the figures, the factory is, but it's up to me what happens. I don't think they're gonna be painted because they, painted nipples tend to look weird where sculpted nipples serve the purpose of making them not look fake, but then you still have the nipples that just don't stand out. So they're probably not gonna be painted. So for those of you that keep asking, there will be nipples on the bare chested figures, but they probably won't be painted. Uh, anyway, so that's just another version. Like, they're gonna have the same body sculpt mostly, but then we have all of these different cybernetic enhancements. Again, there will be no shoulder pins, things like that. Uh, I made sure that they're, like, so if we have pins in the forearms, the pin will be either the same color, it'll probably be molded in, or it'll be painted the same color as the fiber fibers underneath the skin, and that's gonna work underneath on here too. I made sure that they could both be the right color of the skin, so that'll work. Um, I guess that's it. I, that's all I really need to mention for that. So we have the two naked bodies, the, the regular one and then the one with the cybernetic muscles. And then I guess we don't get to find out when he falls. 
It just goes to show I've perfectly engineered the perfect action. No, uh, or maybe, I don't know. Uh, we have different bodies, obviously. We have like a heavier armor one. That's what this guy has. Uh, and depending on how it's painted, obviously you could say it's leather or it's metal or whatever for the individual pieces of armor. But this guy's got a little bit more of a heavy armor look to him. Heavier armor while still being lightweight. So we have that one. And then for the other armor, which is on this guy, happens to be my personal favorite with the torn sleeves underneath. They share the same abdomen. You're gonna see things like that because it's a very small thing and you still get the utility out of it and it looks good with either one. I designed it that way. Neither one looks like it's using apart from something else. It looks like it was intended to be that way. But then you have the main upper body having the different armor. So that's a thing that we're gonna be doing. So this guy is a good example of something that I'm gonna focus on in terms of the functionality. These pieces up here, you can probably see the seam a little bit on the prototype. These are gonna be made out of as soft a plastic as I can use in order to afford as much range out of the arms as possible while still having the shoulders covered by the torn sleeves. You can see right here even. If that's a soft piece, you'll be able to flex the arms better. And so that's the kind of thing we're gonna focus on. Same thing for the various belts. There's a whole bunch of different belts and things I've already made. I think I only have three here. So we have one that's just like your average kind of wraps and those serve to hide the seam between the pants and the torso, but they're also gonna be very soft, like for this this one, for instance. This is, this is that resin that's like PVC, and it's very flexible, but they'll probably, if I can get the factory to do it, um, and it actually works properly, these are gonna be a very soft material. So all the belts are gonna be able to flex and get out of the way as much as possible, and you're gonna have tons of range of motion. Same thing for the diaper piece that's in there. As long as that's really soft, you're gonna get tons of range. And even if it's only a little bit soft, like I'll show you in a minute, uh, we get plenty of range out of it. And all the things like this, like anything that's two pieces that should have articulation, it's gonna be articulated. Now, obviously it's not the best to have a two piece belt that just moves side to side, but we can't make them out of actual cloth. And so that'll be better than, better than nothing. Or for instance, like this guy's hood comes off and he has uh, tassels. <laughs> that's not what they're called that go into the back of his head, just things like that. Everything that should be articulated, like we're not square pegging this and gluing it into the back of the head. It's gonna be a ball peg so that you can move it around and he'll have his tassels on the back of his head. Uh, there will be scabbards of some sort. I haven't decided how I wanna do it for sure. I mean, I had decided at one point if I'm just gonna do like the short type of scabbard like that, and then obviously this is removable. Uh, I hate having long scabbards that hang, or sheaths that hang on figures because they just get cumbersome once there's nothing in there. Uh, so I don't know, I might do something like that or I might have two options, like a tiny one and then like a full scabbard. I don't know, same thing for the belt. It's essentially the same type of piece. Obviously it's, they rotate on both because I made the pegs so that they're functional. Uh, but again, I don't know if I want to do like a scabbard like that or like a full on scabbard. I don't know. And there's different swords. People have been asking me that. Are there different kinds of swords? Yes, I've made a whole bunch of different weapons. I'm still developing this as well. So, uh oh. I have to lubricate these parts because like I said, it's almost PVC, but it's not quite. That one feels stuck. I can't twist some of the joints, but I'll make sure I can show you guys all the articulation as best as possible. And some of them I didn't lube enough when I put them together. Anyway, there will be a whole bunch of different weapons and accessories and things like that. Uh, there's even like a little just gadget thingy that you can take this off and to hide that hole that's in there There's a little like pouch type thingy you can put on like I've I've considered everything you could consider In terms of making these as functional and versatile and fun and collectible as possible Like I'm making these think of it in the way soda did their Street Fighter line They're, they're being made in a way that the person who's making them would actually want to own them rather than to just make as much profit as possible. Now, granted, I want to get rich off of it. No, I, I'm making these so that people actually want to buy them. And if that works out that way, then that's perfect. That, that works for me, it works for everybody else. You can notice things like the wrists have the proper articulation for the accessories. Oh, the hands won't have pins in them either. Those will be insert molded for sure. Same thing for the ankles, no pins down here. Um, but we'll have pins probably in the knees and the elbows. We'll see for sure, but that's the idea. Uh, is that enough? I think I should just go over the articulation now. What do you guys think? We're in 20 minutes. This is a long ass video. Let's just use this one to go over the articulate. 
I can't even speak anymore, over the articulation, and hopefully all of his joints are lubed up properly. They all have the same general articulation. Some of them will be slightly different based on the sculpt. You can see he's got the wider hips than they're gonna have. Although granted, that's no wider than like Marvel Legends or anything, but the hips are gonna be sucked in on the final release. So if you don't like that, don't worry about that. And these are the baggy pants that tuck in at the boot like this. There's another type of pants, and then there's robot legs, and there's, there's other things. I just, I didn't make parts for all of them because like I said, it's just too much. So actually we'll use, we'll use this guy for the neck articulation because the obviously a head like this is gonna have less range than a head that's just a, a ninja head. So I'll show you how the articulation works generally speaking. Well, you can see it right there. We have a double ball peg because that is the best way to do neck articulation. I don't care what anybody says. If you're doing basic articulation, which this is, double ball peg is the best. If you're doing like 15 different joints and things, then sure, you might be able to work something out. So you can get like all the range you could possibly ever want. And this is on one of the thicker, bulkier necks. If you put this head here, if you put a head like this on a naked body, I didn't lube this guy. When you don't have any armor or anything encumbering them, they can look all the way down, all the way up, side to side, like you can do anything you want. And the worst gapping there is, is just like the tiniest little bit of, you'll be able to see the ball in there. But you're gonna have all of the range you could possibly ever want out of these necks when they're not limited by the sculpt. Obviously this guy has heavier armor, straps next to his head, and a helmet, so he's got less range, but you're still gonna have as much range as I could pack into it, you know? That's just the way it goes. And some of them may be adjusted a little bit so that he could look up higher, maybe, but he's got like layers of clothing on there and then the helmet. So who knows? You know, things like that are obviously always going to be an issue, but there's nothing you can do about that. So again, as much range as absolute possible. So that this was a good example of the most amount of range, like a bear head on a bear body, obviously. Shoulders are standard ball hinge shoulders, but you get all the range you could want out of that going all the way up and obviously full rotation. Minimal gapping all the way around and minimal cuts up here. Like that's one of the things I never understood is some companies make them go all the way down and it doesn't work and some companies don't put any in there and it doesn't work. You can have just a tiny little bit there and still get way better than necessary range. So I'm not quite sure what's the deal, but there we go. There's that double jointed elbows. Now this guy has the sleeves on. We have lots of different parts like this too. So these are the wrapped sleeves. You still get plenty of range out of it, but uh, if you want more, you can either take the sleeves off or I guess buy one without the sleeves or wraps or whatever. They have plenty of range in the elbow, not a full 180 because that's always ugly, but it's also a very seamless elbow in that I rounded all the joints out like they used to do back in the day and now everything's cut flat and janky looking, uh, but I rounded the elbow so you get most of the range out of down here and then a little bit up there and the joint functions. And I also sculpted it so that if you're posing them like they're fighting or something, you can hyper extend the joint just a little bit so that you can give them like, a, like an arm bar type of situation. Oh, by the way, this is the hat head that everybody's been talking about. This one's made out of hard resin. I didn't do the soft stuff on it, so it falls off easily right now. It just doesn't peg on properly. That's why it fell off. But uh, that's how the elbows work. And on the cybernetic arms, they also get uh, particularly good range. Are we in focus? Come on. Let's focus. There we go. So these guys also get really good range. Like, he can grab his own boobs. So that's pretty good. A lot of figures can't do that. I've, that was a very important thing for me. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Uh, and then the wrists all have hinges that are based on the pose of the hand. So it's all about utility. So a hand like this can go like that. The sword holding hand has the vertical hinge like this. We have a bunch of like style pose hands and fists and things. And all of the hands have hinging in them that works based on what you would be doing with that hand predominantly. Uh, people have asked why not ball hinges? And the answer to that is budget. <laughs> That's it, it's just budget. So, you know, I, or a lot of people have asked why not butterfly joints? Again, uh, budget, but also I didn't want to break up any of the sculpts with butterfly joints that aren't necessary. I've already shown photos of these guys holding swords two-handed. You don't need a butterfly joint to do that if you do your articulation properly. Uh, for the torsos, we have double ball pegs again, so you can get really crunchy range, and obviously you can get some gapping. You're going to get some, but you can also adjust for it, and that makes it very minimal. That's what's nice about the double ball peg. You get your main amount of range on one of the balls, and then you get adjustments on the other, so it's always good to have two balls. But you can lean them back really far, lean them forward really far, side to side. 
Like this guy's got a really thick belt on, which isn't even the final sculpt, and he's still getting really good range until he bumps into that. And then the lower torso also has just wicked good range. All the way around, these guys are just... I focused on articulation. This one, I don't think I lubed it up before I put it together. Let's see. I can pose it a little bit. Yeah, it's very tight. Let's look at this one. So, it doesn't matter if you have armor on them or not, you're gonna be able to get really, really good range out of these out of these guys. I'll tell you what, posing prototypes, not as much fun as figures that are gonna be put together with final product materials. But you can just rotate them and pose them around really however you want to, and you're gonna have, you have to be careful when you're dealing with these materials. Uh, you're gonna be able to pose them pretty much however you want, and you're not gonna really have any heavy seams anywhere or any gaps or anything like that. In fact, the biggest gap is gonna be in the crotch. And I have two options for that. Look at that. I over lubed that one and didn't lube some of it. Anyway, I threw some of these together just for this video so they're a little bit loose. So you already saw the articulation here and here, but the hips are very important. And I designed them so that you can get like better than horizontal range out of the kick and they can go back pretty far too. If it that's going to basically be limited by the softness of the diaper so we'll see how that all functions but you can also do full-on splits like they have the full range of motion anything you want a hip to do it'll be able to do now this piece right here may end up being a little bit thinner uh, in order to bring the legs together we'll see it's not going to be as ugly as this because i have two ideas for that well one is they're going to be not pink and white so you're not going to see that as much so if you wanted to put him into a kicking pose, yeah, obviously you'll be able to see his guts in there a little bit, but that's just the nature of action figures. I can't have things move and not have articulation, but I do have some ideas about ways I might be able to hide that a little bit more, and we'll see if I have to make this crotch a little smaller. Things like that are gonna be adjusted, but you still get all the range you could possibly want out of the hips, forward, back, side to side, thigh swivel. That's just on the ball socket alone, and that's plenty but the socket that the ball is going into also can rotate in the hip. So you'll be able to come close to doing like a cross-legged sitting pose. I don't know if we're actually gonna be able to achieve that because it's plastic and, oh, okay. So let's go ahead and talk about the knees. But um, I posted on about this not that long ago and some people had comments. Some people said, leave them the way they are. Well. Oh, the idea is I want to have the legs have as much range as possible, but we have baggy pants. So how much should I hollow out? And this is already a, a significantly better than 90 degree bend. I have adjusted these a little bit so that you're going to get even a little bit more range out of that. So like a, a deep kneel should be fairly achievable for the figure. Um, but that's already plenty. Like you should be able to pose them. That's not a great pose, but you can pose them as they are just fine. But the knee has been already reworked, so you're gonna get better range out of this and across the other legs too, not just the baggy pants. So you're gonna get that. The knee joint, you can see how the kneecap sticks out a lot right now. That's going to be, it already has been a little bit, but that's going to be adjusted. But that wasn't an accident. Well, it sticks out a little more on the prototype than it would normally, but I did that on purpose because from any angle other than directly from the side, it fills out the knee joint. Like you have to look at the silhouette of it. And the joint itself, like the white part in there, will be the right color so it won't stand out. But I have the knees sticking out a little bit because I'm sure you guys have noticed on most action figures with a double jointed knee, you end up with a really flat, like just cut off front of the knee. And I hate that. So by having this stick out a little bit, it gives you the right profile. So if you're doing photography or something, it's going to look way better with that sticking out as long as you're not directly from the side. And the reason I don't have that going down onto the knee joint to fill in that little that little gap up there is because I don't want to cut into the pants. Like you'll see a lot of Marvel Legends where it's like scalloped on both sides and all the way around for the knee to fit in. Well, that doesn't look good, so I didn't want to do that. So I've considered all of these things and it will look a little bit better than this at least, maybe a lot better, but it, it, it is the way it is for a reason. And it may end up changing even, but that's that's why that's like that. Okay, but you get, you're going to have plenty of range out of those. And then for the ankles, this was another one I really spent a lot of time making sure they're going to function properly. I hate it when feet and ankles don't work right because there's really no reason for it. So these guys can go all the way flat and pretty far forward. Like that's, that's pretty far. I may, I may be able to squeak out a little bit more, but I wanted to do it again with as little gapping as possible. We'll look at the gray one. 
So you can see there's no gap going all the way around the whole foot. The only little gap is right at the very front. So I may be able to trim that a little bit to get more range, but that's already like, that's better than almost all of the Marvel Legends, for instance. And again, it goes all the way back and really far forward. And as far as the ankle rocker goes, it's almost perfectly 90 degrees. So you're gonna be able to use this guy's ankle rocker no problem at all. People have asked about toe hinges. Toe hinges are almost always worthless. They cost too much and they almost never work because they're too soft and too little. So I'm not spending budget on that. You guys don't wanna pay for it. It's not gonna be as useful as the money that would go towards something else. So that's a major main rundown of the articulation for these guys. Uh, again, things are gonna change. For you guys, not much. For me, it's like tons and tons of work and <laughs> significant changes, but since you're only getting a kind of cursory overview here, they're not gonna change all that much. And what you're looking at here is, other than paint, uh, more or less what's gonna be for sale. I mean, not necessarily these, well, this one's gonna be one of them for sure. But like this guy, this is probably not one of the final combinations. But then again, we do also have things like uh, arms with full on sleeves, uh, there's a jacket, there are shoulder pads, there's all kinds of different forearm attachments, accoutrement. Uh, there's a big vest that I have for the naked body, like a big, like, um, I don't know what you would call it. It's like a big vest, a V-shaped slash armory type thing. There's that, there's a heavy duty samurai. There's all kinds of different stuff that I have to uh, figure out how I wanna do it. But of course, it all depends on the Kickstarter. If, it, if we don't do that well, then we're only gonna have a very basic assortment and worry about the other ones later. If we do really well, there's gonna be stretch goals and all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, I think that'll probably do it. That ended up being a super duper long video, guys. If you made it this far, um, what could you say in the comment section to let me know? Just put ninja, ninja are the coolest. That's super corny. But um, if you put that, I'll know that you made it to the end because nobody's going to say that <laughs> without a prompt. So I'll know you made it all the way to the end, guys. But there it is. That's my action figure line that I have developed from scratch. I've, and it's all been me except for like I talked to my buddies about things that they think would look cooler. I had my one buddy design something, but I don't have that here to show you. So like there's a couple things that have been designed by other people. Uh, one of the things was designed by somebody on Patreon as like a reward type thing. Um, none of that's here, unfortunately, yet. But... Uh, m otherwise it's all me and obviously inspiration from various things you know people like to say it looks like Robocop or it looks like Mortal Kombat well those all look like something else too that's just the nature of things I mean we're talking about ninja and cyborgs those aren't exactly the most unique things in the world so you'll be able to draw uh, connections or parallels or even just see the inspiration for certain things but um, that's the way it goes that's that's the such is life that's that's the way things are I mean we're talking about 40 years of pop culture stuff, I'd say about the 80s is when this kind of thing really started being a thing. So uh, yeah, obviously you're going to see some similarities across some things. That's just the way it goes. So, All right, I guess that's it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want to see all my upcoming stuff, though. This won't be on the channel regularly other than little advertisements and things until it's time to, until it's go time. But again, check out Rival Collectibles on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, I guess that'll do it, guys. So thanks again for watching. Do subscribe. I have new videos, regular videos, almost every single day. And there are literally, I'm not exaggerating, thousands already on the channel. So come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.